Today I'm gonna to show you the only oatmeal raisin cookie recipe you'll ever need. This cookie recipe has been up on my website for a while, but I've noticed a little uptick in rave reviews lately, so I thought I would make a video about it. No offense to any other oatmeal raisin cookie recipes, but this is the only one I ever reach for. I love it. They're perfectly crispy around the edges. They're nice and chewy on the inside. The best thing about these oatmeal raisin cookies is when they bake, they get quite thin and almost, they have like a lacy quality to them. They're so good. I love these cookies. I'm very excited to finally make a video about them. So I hope you like them too. I talked a little bit about weighing versus measuring ingredients in the pumpkin muffin recipe a few episodes back, but I kind of want to talk about it even more because I just feel that it solves so many problems that we have in baking. Like for example, when you have a perfectly brand new butter packet intact, it's really easy to measure. But if you've been slicing slabs off of it or carving bits off for your toast or whatever, your butter is kind of an imperfect blob. And I don't know about you, but I have zero interest in packing butter into a measuring cup. Weighing solves that problem every time. So this recipe calls for 225 grams of butter, which is about a cup, which means I can just zero out my scale here. See how much butter I've got. Oh, 237. All right, so I'll shave a little off. 225. Perfect. So that whole thing can just get dumped in and I made no extra dirty dishes or anything. Now for all the rest of the ingredients, I'm just going to put the whole bowl onto the scale here and I'm going to add the sugars straight into the butter. So I've got 340 grams of white sugar. Again, just zero out my scale and dump right in. How big is your sugar bucket? <laughs> Next, the brown sugar. So I'm adding 200 grams. And this scoop just lives in the brown sugar at all times. So I'm never washing any dirty scoops or dirty cup measures or anything. Well, once in a while I wash them, but you know what I mean. All right, so that's the butter and the sugars. And I'm just gonna put that onto the mixer. Starting it on low and then just turning it up a bit. Once that's all mixed together, I'm gonna add in the vanilla and the eggs. Vanilla, it says two teaspoons. It's about right. And I'm gonna add one egg at a time because if you add two at once, it's really hard to mix in. By the way, it is really hard to get a camera to see inside of a KitchenAid bowl. Just saying. <laughs> I, I never realized that when I was watching, you know, Barefoot Contessa and all that when I was younger. That's it for the creaming part. The next is the dry ingredients. And as I did with the muffin recipe the other day, I'm just gonna sift everything in. No measuring, just weighing. So we've got 240 grams of all-purpose flour going in. go and then my usual super easy to measure combo here which is a teaspoon of all the other things teaspoon of salt i really love a salty baked good i mean it doesn't turn out salty but i find most baking recipes if they even ask for salt at all it's like a quarter teaspoon maybe a half teaspoon but full teaspoon i swear it's just better so teaspoon of baking powder, teaspoon of baking soda, and optional is some cinnamon. I didn't use it the first time I made these, but I basically just decide each time what my, what my mood calls for. It's actually Halloween tonight, today. So I'm feeling like, you know, cozy fall cinnamon just feels right. So I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. And then I'm just gonna sift that in And it's all getting mixed 
through the sieve, so there's no need to pre-mix this in a separate bowl. The sieve just goes away, it's perfectly clean. And then mix that in. This time you wanna do it really slow so that it doesn't, you know. And I only wanna mix it just, just till it's combined. I don't wanna overdo it. And the last ingredients are the oats and the raisins. And if you don't like raisins, I don't know why you're watching this video, but you can definitely sub chocolate chips or dried cranberries or just about anything else. <laughs> anything else in that category. 225 grams of raisins. I think this is exactly right. Dump that in. And then oats, and I'm actually using quick oats. They're really tiny and I like that. That's actually the only oats I've ever used for this recipe. And this is 270 grams. This recipe barely fits in a KitchenAid mixer. All right, looks good. So it's time to scoop. I have a cookie sheet here lined with parchment paper and if it looks a little bit worse for wear that's because I'm reusing it because I made cookies the other day and I'm using it again. And I love a trusty scoop to scoop my cookies. I also love keeping my trusty scoop in my cool apron pockets. More info about these aprons on my website. <laughs> and I'm just gonna start scooping. My scooping technique is like scoop, scrape it on the side of the bowl, and then kind of like use the kind of heel of my hand to just scrape off the excess. So it's really a packed kind of full scoop. And then for this size of cookie, I think about 12 fit nicely on a tray. So it's like three by four. Actually, it might be three by three. And now I'm not so sure, second guessing myself. Let's see how we feel. So now that I've got, I'm gonna do nine because I feel like I'm pushing it if I do 12. And I actually do kind of slightly press them down just to get them started. And then these go into a 350 degree oven for about 10, 12 minutes or so. And this batch makes about 24, so I'm gonna be scooping for a while. A great little trick for when you don't need a whole 24 cookies is to bake one tray and then with the rest, you can just scoop them onto the tray and you don't have to spread them apart because we're not gonna bake them. I'm just gonna fire this tray in the freezer so that they can freeze into individual balls. And then once they're frozen, I'll just transfer them to a Ziploc bag and I've got cookies on demand in the freezer. And honestly, that is the best gift you can give yourself sometimes. It's been about 13 minutes or so and the house smells so good and I think the cookies are ready. Okay, here they are. I took these out when I just started to see some kind of golden brown action forming around the edges, but they're still quite light in color and I can see right in front of my very eyes they're kind of collapsing onto themselves which is just great. They're kind of collapsing and making little ridges and hills around the raisins and I'm not going to touch them for at least five ten minutes because they're really soft and bendy right now so I'll just leave them alone and chill out. <laughs> All right. They're finally cool enough to transfer onto a cooling rack. I have to be super delicate though. See how like thin and kind of lacy they are? They kind of remind me of a Florentine cookie in a way. That really thin kind of lacy, chewy, crispy thing. It's so nice. And it's especially good in a oatmeal raisin cookie because it's got that inherent kind of chew factor in it with the raisins, it's just 
Just a great cookie overall. <laughs> Mmm. That crispy edge. Even though they're still warm, they still have that really crispy edge. And they're super chewy in the middle. Mmm. These cookies are the best. Thanks so much for making cookies with me today. It's been a real hoot. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. <laughs>